Hi everybody. How are you all doing? I am very excited for our guest today. Hi, Josh. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so we're going to give it another minute for people to join in. Um, but how's your week going? Um, it's going well, I guess. I'm just like at home and resting. I passed my permit test. Yay! <laughs> so Yay! Now I can learn how to drive. It's a couple of years overdue. Yeah. <laughs> when do you think you're going to get your driver's license? Mm, I think you know, after I learn how to drive, maybe in a couple months. Okay, no, yeah, that's perfect. Um, all right, so we're gonna get started then. Um, so mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, I'm Jackson. We have a very special guest today, Nina Liu. Um, it's part of our AAPI Heritage Month uh, series where we talk to creatives in the industry um, and hear about their experience. Um, so yeah, as I said, Nina Liu is um, a Chinese American actress. She first became known for her role as Tiffany Chen on Disney's hit show, Bunked. Since then, she has starred in other series such as Sunny Side Up and a movie, an American girl, girl story, Ivy and Julie, 1976. Currently, she is a student at the USC School of Cinematic Arts, majoring in screenwriting. And this year, she launched her music career with the debut single, Prom Night. Nina is an avid influencer who has prom a massive... Prom <laughs> what? It's prom date, but thank you. <laughs> prom date, excuse me. Thank you for the correction, Miss Lou. Um, <laughs> And Nina is, of course, an avid influencer who has amassed over 3.8 million followers across multiple platforms, which is awesome. And so thank you for joining us, Nina. Yeah. Um, okay, so I guess we'll just sort of start at the beginning. So walk us through a bit about, like, where you grew up and what sort of got you into acting. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I had no intent of entering the entertainment industry at all. I kind of, like... I grew up in a small town in Orange County, and I grew up in this very, like, bubbled atmosphere of an Asian community of, like, families, or, like, a bunch of Asian families that were, like, my children, my child's going to grow up and go into STEM and, um, you know, become a nurse or something and then live a nice little happy life. I feel like I see a lot of my peers doing that. And I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know anyone else that was going to go into the film industry until uh, probably like one or two years ago that were, that's also Asian. Um, uh, yeah, but the way I got into film was through acting and it all happened when I was running through the mall uh, with my sister when I was 10. And this lady walked up to us and was like, do you guys want to be actresses? But to be honest, I wouldn't recommend getting into the entertainment industry that way. I don't think you should go through that program or those kinds of programs. I just would recommend a different route. Okay, no, absolutely. Um, that's a very interesting story. I haven't heard anyone share that, that they were found in a mall. But you never know who you'll, who you'll run into. Um, and so, of course, your parents aren't from the U.S. And so what was their sort of perspective on you pursuing acting at this age? Um, to be honest, my parents are, I feel like they're different because, or they're special because they were very supportive of me acting. And I will say that that is one of the biggest factors that got me so successful are my parents supporting me. Um, because like they, they would, we don't live in Los Angeles. We live like an hour, an hour, half away. And they would drive me there every weekend to go to classes and, no matter like how much the classes cost or um, they didn't even think that I was going to earn money or make anything of this, but they wanted to do this for me because it made me happy. And um, they saw that acting made me a lot more confident because I was a really like shy and anxious child. And yeah, they, but like, I feel like, you know, of course, the minute the first check came in the mail, they were like, oh, <laughs> like this could be a career. And now that's why I'm pursuing this as a career. <laughs> Yeah, and the second you turned 18, you're like, where's the money? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, okay, so how did so how did the opportunity of Bunt come along? Because you're in this mall, you sort of get discovered by this agent person. So when did that sort of, like, what was the process like for that? 
that was okay i yeah i would recommend if you want to go into acting get an agent and a manager first because they know people they can send you auditions and that's how you get into it and um so i got my auditions through my agent and my manager uh they just started sending emails that were like opportunities to audition and stuff and i uh Bug was my second audition, actually, and that doesn't usually happen. It usually takes some time to build up that kind of career. So, yeah, uh, the first audition I had was for Austin and Allie. It was, like, this really small part, and I remember I got, like, a callback for that, but I didn't get it. And then right after, I got, like, this audition for this girl named Tiffany on this new show, and then I booked that. That's awesome. <laughs> and so, of course, you're, like, how old are you at the time when you get this role? I was 11. <laughs> okay, so that's like super young. And so of course you like sort of jump into it, you start working. What was that like balancing, like being a professional and then also being a kid at the same time? Um, I will say that was pretty difficult. Like I was scared to admit it at the time, like in other interviews, if people would ask me that question, I can't, I felt like I couldn't say, you know, I'm having a hard time in my life right now. But I think that was a pretty hard time in my life. Like balancing that because I'm used to being in school and socializing with a bunch of kids my age I wasn't really used to being in that environment with so many other adults and having to associate with adults like that was very interesting um so that was pretty hard and like school what used to be the only thing I would have to focus on and then I just have my other hobbies and fun things I do on the side but once I started acting on working on the show it had to kind of be like school took like a backseat and I, I kind of don't feel like I really learned anything in, in that, those two years so yeah okay yeah the, the, that's definitely interesting it's such like a unique experience I think working as a child um but no yeah and so looking back on the role of Tiffany Chen I think you know a lot of people from this standpoint can clearly see there were issues in the way she was written um and it's evident watching the show now that the character is very, you know, a racist stereotypical depiction of Asian Americans. Um, how have you begun to sort of see your character differently as you have matured? I, it's, I mean, it's like surprising when I say this, but I did not realize at the time that she was a stereotype. Neither did my parents. And I don't think my parents still recognize that. And um, yeah, it, it's really weird how like the social atmosphere has changed within like five seven years um of course like that would not fly in this day and age like if you write a character like that you could be like oh this character is a little stereotypical um and we would flag that down but at the time i think i want to highlight that it's not only just the writers or just the actors that were like just took on this role and like oh my gosh this is great let's film this and let's make this character even though she might be problematic i want to highlight that it was a lot of people we had like a lot a lot of people working on the show like a lot of producers and a lot of people um everywhere like it was giant it was a really big team effort and nobody caught that kind of so i really think it was just like the social atmosphere has changed a lot and I think for the better I didn't even notice that it was that the character was stereotypical until I would say a year ago when somebody made a TikTok about the, our show with the theme song and was like this show is so racist and everyone in the comments was talking about it and then it just like suddenly hit me and I was like <laughs> like oh no what <laughs> yeah and it was just yeah, sometimes it um, boggles me that none of us caught that. <laughs> I mean, no, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's like you said, it was, it, it's a large number of people who are, of course, working on a TV show. I mean, we're talking like dozens and then, of course, in corporate structure, hundreds and a lot of people. Of course, you as an 11 year old, I'm sure weren't like dissecting the script at all. But no, you're absolutely right. I think it, it's interesting how like the atmosphere has sort of changed in the industry. Um, but no, yeah. And then, so ha have you noticed like going on auditions and stuff, like there are more roles available that are less stereotypical or like, what has that been like? Yeah. Um, I think it fluctuates throughout the years. I think it has 
I want to say it's gotten better. Um, but I still see, you know, sometimes every so often you see an audition. It's like, mm, but I, I think it has gotten better. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, some of the auditions I got in the very beginning would be very much, like, I'm a Chinese girl, and I can speak Mandarin, and I can do, th like, that was kind of the the vibe, and now I get more that are just, like, oh, I'm just, like, a friend of a character, and I, like, I'm sassy, or, like, I have, like, this kind of personality, and I get, like, yeah, I get uh, less stereotypical auditions now, but every so often you come upon one that's just a little interesting, and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I mean, it's definitely, although the industry has changed, it's not completely where it needs to be. Um, I, however, like every time I get an audition and it's by like, there are other Asian people working in the, like, I they send like, you know, producer, director, writers, like they send like that spiel. And when I see like Asian things in there, it doesn't tend to be stereotypical. So it's just like a pattern I've noticed. Right, yeah. I mean, I'd hope not if, you know, an Asian creative is attached to a project, they wouldn't make it um, stereotypical. Um, but I, yeah, I, I know you said you also um, are going into screenwriting. And so I'm curious, what sort of made you go into that direction? And was there any correlation between your experience on Bond playing that character, or just what you were seeing in the industry? Um, yeah, completely there's correlation. I would have never thought of screenwriting as a career option or a field I can go into, um, like, if it weren't for my acting period of time that I spent working in the industry. I, um, to be honest, it all started out, because I was pretty young, it just started out as fun games. Like, I was just acting on set, and, you know, because I was lonely, I was just... It was interesting because I had to like befriend adults for the first time and there are many different kinds of people working on set like there were the directors and like the network people and then the other actors and I feel like my best friends on set were like the writers I made this really good friend with our co-executive producer Adam and of Bunked and <clears throat> he kind of took me in and I just always felt drawn to the writing because from the very first script that I received of our show, I was just like, wow, people came up with this. It's so funny. I mean, like, I was the demographic audience back then. So I was just like, this is cool. Like, this is so good. And then I, it would just, like, blow my mind how people would, could, like, write jokes and just, like, write characters and put it on a page and have it be made. So I was always drawn to screenwriting. And then I would hang out with Adam. And one day he he was like, let's get you in, in a writer's room so you can just see what it's like. And he, he was really excited for me to go, like, be, that I was interested in screenwriting too because a lot of our actors in the cast, you know, we always, like, deviate into other interests too um, behind the camera. A lot of us <laughs> go into directing or they want, they're like, can I shadow um, Bob, for, can I shadow, like, the director for a week? A lot of them did that, but I was, I was less leaning towards that and more towards like I want to be in the writer's room I want to see what you guys are doing in there so he let me sit in on the writer's room once and I was in a round of like network notes like they were taking notes from the network and applying them and um it was really really interesting because I thought I know we I always knew that we had different drafts of the script like we had like the first draft and shooting draft and then the blue and pink drafts and then final drafts and but I never realize like why we were having so many drafts because there's like this interworking kind of relationship between the writers and the network and everyone else and it, it was just like a lot more collaborative than I thought and I spent like hours with them that day just in the room taking network notes or listening to them take the network notes like oh this one thing on this one joke was a little like on the nose this one was a little inappropriate you have to change it and then we just sat there and took a bunch, a bunch of notes. And it's pretty hard being funny. <laughs> I learned like coming up with those jokes for those characters, like it takes a really long time. So it was a really fun experience. No, yeah, I mean, that's such a fantastic learning experience, being able yeah. to sit in a writer's room like in at middle school age. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mm -hmm. I wish I was older so I could like appreciate it more, but it was really great. Um, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot, but I haven't, I have this other thing that's, after I worked on Bunked, I worked on my, like, my movie, that American Girl movie, and 
like there I met Mei Chan and she she wrote the script for that movie and um she also I was like kind of a fan of her because I found out she wrote an episode of Avatar The Last Airbender and that's my favorite show and but that was also the first time that I saw someone where I was like that's another Asian person as a screenwriter because our whole like writing team on Bunked was white. So I didn't really consider this like a career option option for me until I saw her and I was like, yeah, if there's one, if she can do it, that means I can do it too. That means like other people like me get jobs in this industry and I can too. So after that, I was like, yeah, let's get into screenwriting. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, that's, like, so fantastic. And I, I think it's really important to also touch on, because you briefly mentioned it, it's not easy or fun being a child, like, a child actor. It's not, like, fun all the time. Like, I, I think people who sort of watch your show have this idea, like, you ran around, like, a forest all day. But, like, that's very <laughs> much not it. Or they see you, like, on a red carpet, and they think, like, that's fun. But, I mean, it's long hours, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's a lot of it is curated, like, social media and, like, 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 how much fun we're having on set. It's funny that you mentioned the red carpet thing, because I remember, um, I went to, like, the Queen of Cotway premiere, and I still have this picture on my Instagram, like, I bought, I bought a whole outfit, and I went there with my mom, and it was right after work, and I was, like, I went to that whole premiere, and I took this picture just, like, on the red carpet to, to post on social media, because that was the most important part, and, like, right after I like threw up during the movie and I was like my body was like giving out and then we had to go home I didn't even finish watching the movie so that's like kind of like stuff that happens behind the scenes <laughs> so it isn't that glamorous all the time no definitely not <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely and I think that's definitely you know important for people to realize about the industry um so as <laughs> a, as a writer what sort of stories do you want to tell and how do your like personal identities influence that yeah, um, I find, yeah, I find myself writing a lot of things that come from different communities that I'm in because I can, like, relate to those communities the most, and I want to have representation for those communities. I definitely want to write, you know, more scripts with Asian characters that are accurate and, you know, good representations of Asian characters. Um, I love the romance genre, so I feel like I'm going to work somewhere in there like rom-com and like romantic dramedy something like that I also really like coming of age and speaking of romance I um I am on the asexual spectrum so I'm demi and I feel like there is no asexual representation at all <laughs> um in the media so I am looking forward to like bringing some representation into that and yeah I just feel like yeah, there's a lot I want to write for, not just like writing to represent these communities, but I feel like there can be really fun and creative stories that are found within these communities that um, a lot of people would want to watch because it's entertaining and it's fun. So I feel like we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's so fantastic. Just hearing, you know, all the different aspects of yourself that you want to include and really uplift um, the various communities through your writing. Um, and so, of course, I know you have to love writing to be a screenwriter, um, but you've also been writing music recently. Um, yeah. You, yeah, you just released a new song called Prom Date. <laughs> and um, so what was the inspiration <laughs> behind the song and so what made you want to move into music? I never started writing songs where I'm just like, I'm going to break into the music industry and I'm going to be on the radio. I always have loved singing and... Um, I, this wouldn't have happened, actually, if I didn't watch Boss Baby 2, because, or no, Boss Baby 1. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You, like, your inspiration to life is Boss Baby, the movie? <laughs> no, Jackson, wait, no, no. Okay, <laughs> me getting into music wouldn't have happened, <laughs> getting to songwriting wouldn't have happened if I didn't watch Boss Baby. It's like the butterfly effect, because I watched Boss Baby, and, um, I saw that scene where they were like in the beginning of the movie where they were putting his son, their son to bed. And I have not seen like, Boss Baby, nor will I ever, but please continue. Yes, I just wanted to make good that movie clear. Back. <laughs> okay. They like the parents were putting their son to bed and they the dad like whipped out a guitar and started playing Blackbird by the Beatles. And I was like, 
wow, that song, it's so beautiful. I must learn how to play it. And then I got my guitars. And then I learned Blackbird, so that's the first song I learned on guitar, <laughs> because of Boss Baby. And then I got really into the guitar, actually. And then I learned chords and a bunch of stuff. And then um, I, like, started doing covers and posting them on Instagram. And they would get, like, um, tens of thousands of views. So I was doing pretty well with that, actually. And that's what made me, like, like I want to get into music. And because of how well those videos did, my manager... Um, introduced me to a producer that he's good friends with who ended up producing prom date and he worked with me we did a cover that went on YouTube I made a music video for that cover myself it's not good don't watch it um, it was filmed with my ex-boyfriend and I ended up deleting it off YouTube <laughs> but now that I'm like, oh, it's okay. I still like, I want my songs out there. And you know, the producer did a good job. So I like unprivated it. So it's back up there. Anyway, I'm running on a tangent. Um, so I got really into guitar playing and stuff. And during quarantine, I started writing songs because I had a fat crush on my best friend and I didn't know how to like, what to do with like all my feelings. And one night I decided to write a love letter to him. <laughs> Um, like, to all the boys I love for style, and then I took that away in my diary, and the next day I was looking at it, and I was, like, reading it, and I was like, oh, this kind of rhymes, and then so I put it into a song, I started, like, playing chords over it, and I was like, this is a really catchy song, and that's the first song I ever wrote, it's called I Like You, um, coming out soon, <laughs> and then after that, I just wrote a bunch of songs about my feelings, just to be able to get them out. And then I found out that like, songwriting is a really great medium to, you know, get your feelings out. So it doesn't feel like you're holding them in all the time. And then, yeah, I wrote prom date because I, like, the pandemic just started and I thought I wasn't going to get a prom. So I, like, still had a crush on that guy. And I, like, wrote a song about what it would be like to go to prom with him. And then I didn't finish the song. I was halfway through. I was just like, eh. And then, but then the pandemic, like, like we ended up getting vaccines and my school actually allowed us to have a prom and I got to go to prom and it was like the best night ever which was interesting because school dances usually like are horrible and every other school dance I've been to was really bad um but this night was really good and then so from the second verse on in prom date that's all all those lyrics actually happened at my actual prom like that's my actual experience at prom and then yeah that's how I wrote and finished the song Wow, that, that's awesome. You're so lucky you got a prom. I did not get a prom, so I'm very jealous. But I can live vicariously through your song. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I think one of the biggest um, takeaways of this Q&A was that you do credit Boss Baby and not the Beatles for your music career. Oh. But I'm going to choose to move past that um, for, the, for the sake of my mental health. Um, so, yeah, okay. And makes, so, that makes a lot more sense when you put it like that. Like, the Beatles inspired me against songwriting yeah, yeah but no i like that you credit boss baby i think it's a really good story that you could sort of cash in on too um but um but no yeah and of course like you said you love both you know screenwriting and music which one do you like do you do you like one more than the other or like what do you see yourself pursuing more oh um i like them equally but i will be honest i don't have like I, I want to pursue music, but it costs a lot of money and to like even produce a song and get it out. And I'm not right now. I'm feeling a little unconfident in like that. I could make it as a musical artist in this industry. I don't see a lot of like full Asian, like, like big pop stars or um, so that's a little discouraging for me, but I still, I just like my songs and I don't really care if they like blow up, blow up, but all Want is to just get them produced and get them out there so maybe someone could listen to it and you know relate to it but I think for now like I'll make screenwriting my like career um but I'm always going to be writing music and trying to put it out yeah no that's awesome people need to use it in their TikTok videos now that it's like prom season I'm seeing it come up everyone who's yeah. watching I'm like I wrote it more <laughs> that's on me too you should throw a prom as a promo event. At my house? 
Oh, you can, that, that was basically the music video, actually. That was the music video, Jackson. <laughs> um okay and so yeah so then so now um i mean what is there more music coming that we should be aware of yeah there's music coming don't worry <laughs> a any time frame um i'm hoping to get a song i'm hoping to get i like you produced and out by maybe sometime this summer or the beginning of the school year and i'm working with teddy on producing four months four days and that's another song I wrote about how my best friend, like, stopped calling me, you know, throughout school. And it's just, like, a feeling of, like, you know, friendships kind of falling apart as you're going into college and being away from people. So I'm getting going to get that produced, and I think that will be out by fall. Fingers crossed. Yeah, no, I can't wait to hear all of it. Um, but so now that we're sort of almost at our time, I have, like, two more, like, lighthearted questions that I ask everyone who comes on here. Um, so the first one is, where do you see yourself in five years? Um, in five years? We're graduating in four, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm like, maybe. <laughs> you never know. You never know. If I fail this production class next semester, maybe not. <laughs> what, what, um, one, of, one of the questions was, what's it been like at USC so far? I don't know if you um, want to touch on that, but I did re remove it from our questions. No, no, I would love to talk about it. It's fine. But um, in five years, maybe it would be nice to be like a, a staff writer on a show. I because I love working for TV and that's how I grew up. So I want to be back in that environment um, or yeah, like just like living in LA and writing and maybe writing some projects on the side. Maybe I could be writing a novel or, you know, something like that. And I'm just going to keep on putting out my music and maybe, maybe there'll be like a little like group of, or a following of people who listen to it. And then maybe I can do like small concerts at like small venues. Like that would be sweet, you know? So something like that. No. Oh my God. That's like such a good balance too. If you could um, strike that. Um, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and so our our last question is, who is your dream collaborator? I think maybe we could do one for music and then one for, like, if you wanted them to, like, work on a film project or TV project with you, like, who would that be? Um, Music-wise? Um, <laughs> I swear there's, like, I feel like there's, like, one big name in my head, but I it's not coming to me. I love mxm tune and i feel like our genres mesh pretty well so yeah. i she was like the first artist that i listened to that i a small artist that i discovered like i went to her very first like like 50 people concert in the moroccan lounge and i bought her first line of merch so i feel like i would love to work with her um on a song and um collaboration wise like writing i mean I love Alice Wu as a screenwriter and I've DM'd her on Instagram being like, Hey, <laughs> like, I'm a USC SC screenwriting. If you ever like wanted to talk about writing or anything like, so my dream is to like, and recently I was like at this Netflix event party with like for like AAPI and I was like praying that she'd be there so I could bump into her and maybe like have a conversation. So she's like the dream to like talk to and work with, but yeah. <laughs> did did she? I take it she did not answer the DM. No, but I, she didn't leave me on scene. She just okay. didn't. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um. So Alice Wu, if you see this, like yeah, this is this live is, right now. <laughs> this is Nina's shot right here that she's shooting. Um. Okay, but no, yeah, that's awesome. Those are you know great picks. Um. And so, yeah, um, that brings us to the conclusion of our little Q&A for... Um, You're not going to ask me how USC has been? Oh, go feel free to answer. Yes, how has USC been? Um, it's been good. I've, like, um, the film program is really good. I will say the screenwriting program is very good. Like, I'm coming up with a lot of writing material. And not good just in the way of, like, oh, I'm learning so much. It's just, like, they, the way the curriculum is, it's, like, 
forcing you to be creative in ways that I didn't think I could be creative with before. And I love like just like the collaboration of the whole film school. Um, but I it's really interesting to me because I feel like the film school itself is like a little microcosm of the entire film industry itself. Yeah. Um, and I kind of have like a love hate relationship with it because it reminds me of like when I was working in LA um, all those years ago. Um, so I like that environment of like the, the pressure and I'm doing something great. But at the same time, like it is a little tiring. And like, I love LA, but Orange County is home. And I'm glad to be back here just to like rest. And yeah, I've met some really talented writers. So I'm very grateful to know them. Nice. And talented filmmakers like you, Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I mean, yeah, the school is definitely um, a, a great place to be for if you want to go into this line of work. Um, yeah. I also will say, like, it's helps me get back into acting for the first time in, like, a while. Because I feel like for the longest time, like, in the past couple of years, I've just been auditioning. And that's kind of wearing me out. And... I know, like, the first acting thing I did was with you, <laughs> like, for your short film. Um, and it was, like, really hard for me to get back into it at first because I was just, like, critical of, like, oh, why do I look like that? Why do I sound like that? Like, all this stuff. But then I worked more with other people on their films. And then I feel like it helped me, helped open my eye a little bit to remind me what acting was again and how it felt like just to act with another scene partner and to get directed by somebody. And I have really missed that. So kind of like reigniting my like liking for acting again. So I'm very grateful for that. College is a good time to experiment with a bunch of different things without the pressures of the outside world. Like you have to earn money if you're gonna act in this thing or you know, all that stuff. So I'm grateful for that too. No, yeah, absolutely, definitely. I mean, you did a great job in my short film. Um, I haven't seen Kayla's yet. You're in one of Kayla's, right? Which one? Okay, well, I clearly have some catching up to do. Um, but no, thank you so much, Nina, um, for joining us, uh, joining me today. Um, we will have actually one more um, surprise um, Q&A later this week on Thursday. Um, so be sure to join. Yeah. Um, thank you so much again. Sorry, what? Is it Alice Wu? <laughs> Imagine, and I wouldn't put in a word. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like, hopefully she sees this live. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe next Asian Heritage Month. We'll see oh. if we could get her and you on the same call. Um, but no, seriously, thank you so much, Nina, for joining us. It was super insightful to just yeah. hear about your experience. I'm live next week. You what? I'm excited for your surprise live next week. Oh, it's this week, this Thursday. Oh, oh sorry, my bad. This Thursday. Yeah, we're we're gonna have another actress um from a brand new show on Fox, and so it's gonna be great Ooh. to hear about her experience too. Um, well, yeah, like I said, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, be sure to join the other ones, and if you didn't see our other one with Thomas Percy Kim, Ming Na Wen, Kelly Yu, be sure to check those out too. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for joining, and have a good one. Okay, bye. Bye.